I'm often asked, where do I get a good antenna? Or is this a good antenna? Unfortunately, you do not see if an antenna is good or bad before you do some measurements. Or you build one yourself. That's what we will do today. Be it for satellite reception, for LoRa, weather balloons or even Wi-Fi. Like that we know what we have. And even can save some money. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with a Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. Generally, antennas are simple to build. They are just a few conductive parts soldered to a connector. Two things, however, are essential. How these conductive parts are arranged in relation to each other and their dimensions. There is an infinite number of antenna designs available, as this book full of antennas shows. Today we will build a classic ground plane and answer all questions about its capabilities. It is very simple to build with tools available in every maker lab. And you will see how capable it is. I also will use such a nano VNA to prove that these antennas have a decent performance and we will simulate their far field behavior to calculate their gain. The first question we have to answer with antennas. What is the needed impedance? Our antenna has 50 ohms because most of the maker equipment and the cables we use are standardized on 50 ohms. I suggest that we start with a connector because most antennas have one. These four varieties are used in maker labs. SMA connectors. They are relatively small and suitable for high frequencies up to a few gigahertz. We find them on our LoRa as well as on most Wi-Fi boards. Please pay attention. They are sold in standard configuration as well as with reverse polarity. Then they are called SMA-RP. Both are not interchangeable. I standardize on standard SMA connectors in my lab and only use RP connectors if a device forces me to use one, like some access points. BNC connectors. They are the standard for lab equipment like oscilloscopes. For antennas, they are not used too often. N connectors. They are sturdy and also right up to the gigahertz range. My spectrum analyzer, for example, has such connectors. UHF connectors. They are mostly called PL259 for the male plug and SO239 for the female socket. They were already invented in the 1930s and they are compatible with banana plugs. Pay attention, even if they are called UHF, they are only good below 100 MHz. They are the standard connectors for HF amateur radios. Which one should we use for our antenna? Most of the antennas used by makers are for frequencies above 100 MHz, so we will use an SMA connector. We could also use an N-type if we want to build an antenna with a higher power, but for makers this is not allowed. Only if you get an amateur radio license you are allowed to use high power. The ground plane antenna consists of a vertical radiating element which is connected to the inner of the connector and three or four radials connected to the outer ground of the connector. These radials form the ground plane, which gives the antenna its name. As said before, the different wire length is directly related to the frequency of the antenna. And if it is wrong, the antenna does not perform well. So how do we find the right length? We go to a site that calculates the needed values for us. Let's assume we want an antenna for weather balloons, which in my area operate on 403.5 MHz. If we leave the velocity factor default on 95%, the radiating element is 17.7 cm and each radial is 19.8 cm long. The velocity factor corrects for a reduced speed of light in wires, by the way, and can be left on 0.95 for copper wires. Shall we cut the wire directly to length? What is a good material? 
if we have such an instrument, we usually cut the wires longer because cutting is easier than stretching a wire. Unless you own a Harley Davidson, as shown in video number 212. Without such a device, or if we are in a hurry, we cut it according to the blueprint. We will later see if this is a good idea. For the construction, we can use any straight wire. Bare copper wire, for example, can be used for smaller antennas. Usually, it is not entirely straight, which is mainly an optical problem. Recently, I bought such 3mm aluminum welding rods for my longer antennas. They are very sturdy and cheap. You get them also with smaller diameters for short antennas. A lot of people also use copper or aluminum tubes, particularly for bigger antennas. Male or female connectors can be used depending on your preference. I like this version because it has the needed holes to connect the radials. And it has a short piece of Teflon, which separates the radiating element from the ground. Teflon is an excellent material, mainly because it does not melt even if you abuse it during soldering. To get a good fit between the connector and the rod, I use such threads. They are used in 3D printing. A small copper or brass tube can do the same job. I had to grind the rod down to a fitting diameter. This was no problem because aluminum is not hard. If you use your soldering iron, increase its temperature to the maximum because the rods need heat to get to the right temperature. Now it already looks like an antenna. Cool. But we need a way to attach the radials. I use such naked terminals from my assortment and solder them straight on the rods. Here I used a gas burner for faster success. After attaching all four radials to the connector, our ground plane is ready. Simple. But is it also working? As I said before, you do not see if an antenna is good or bad. So I connect it to my vector network analyzer. If you want to know more about this device and how to use it, feel free to watch video number 359. If you are not interested in measuring an antenna, you can go straight to the next chapter, where you get the results. Next question. What is a good antenna? It has to behave like a 50 ohms resistor to the cable or device attached to it. Then it radiates the full power into the air. Otherwise, a part of the power is reflected and lost. Here we see the antenna's impedance in a Smith chart and the reflected power in an SWR curve. These curves are also explained in video number 359. Let's start with the radials at 90 degrees instead of the 45 degrees shown in the blueprint. Here are the measurements. The SWR curve has its minimum at around 370 MHz. But the lowest SWR is 2.2. A lot of power is reflected and the antenna is not optimal. Why is that? The Smith chart shows us that the antenna is resonant at this frequency. The point is directly on this line. But unfortunately, its resistance is not 50 ohms. A 50 ohms resistor sits here. Our antenna has a resistance of only 21.9 ohms. This is why a part of the power is reflected. Let's now comply with our drawing and bend the radials to a 45 degrees angle. The minimum did move 8 MHz but the SWR became 1.1. Much better than before. If we look at the Smith chart, we see that the resistance is now 45.5 ohms. Much closer to the 50 ohms. Maybe we could tweak a little more, but because we have to accept that the surrounding also has some influence, I stop here. You see, we created a nearly perfect antenna for cheap. Unfortunately, on the wrong frequency. We wanted 403.5 MHz. The SWR on 403.5 is 2.7. Still usable, but as usual on this channel, we want more. How can we shift the minimum to 403.5 MHz? We reduce the length of the radiating element. After the first cut, we are back to 365 MHz. The length of the radials 
does not have a significant effect. So I cut them to the exact length as requested by the blueprint and continue with the resonator. A few cuts later, we are at 403.5 MHz. The SWR is 1.07 and the resistance is 51.5 ohms. Success! In addition, the SWR stays way below 2 for the whole weather balloon band from 401 to 406 MHz. Very good, indeed. The radiator is now 17 cm long. The calculator said it should be a little longer, but not a lot. This is the proof that the calculator provides usable results and you can build such an antenna even without a nano VNA. You can solder the terminals directly to the connector and remove the screws. Or if you want to use the antenna outdoors, you can add conformal coating or color. Just make sure you cover the SMA connector with tape before doing so. I will not do it now because of the freezing temperatures outside. But still, I can replace my not so nice looking antenna of my weather balloon tracker on the roof. By the way, this simple antenna could receive signals from weather balloons more than 200 kilometers away. We talked now about return loss and resonance. What else is vital for an antenna? Its far field pattern and its gain, of course. To find this out, we can use simulation software. You can get costly professional packages, but fortunately we also get a cheaper solution called MMANA-GAL. I modeled our antenna and calculated its behavior mounted 2 meters above the ground. Here we see that it evenly radiates in all directions. This is what we expected because it has a vertical radiator. But how does it radiate in the vertical direction? Here we see that it does not radiate a lot directly upwards. The power not radiated vertically is radiated in other directions and creates a gain of 5.3 dBi at an angle of 5 degrees, for example. Very good if the other station is at a similar height. 5 dBi is a good gain for a non-directional antenna. It multiplies the output power of your device by a factor of 3. Such an antenna even can be used for satellite traffic because other than most people think, satellites hardly ever pass directly overhead. Most passes are in this range. And here our antenna does not lose a lot. Let's check the dimensions of a ground plane antenna for other applications. For Wi-Fi, its measurements are 2.8 and 3.1 cm. Still feasible for do-it-yourself. And what about an antenna for weather satellites at 137 MHz? 50 cm for the vertical element. Possible with the 1 meter long aluminum rods. Here I would use an end connector because it is more stable and the mounting of the 3 mm rod is easier. Conclusions. It is straightforward to build a decent ground plane antenna for our desired frequency. They get bigger and bigger with lower frequencies. When I was young, I had such an antenna for 27 MHz. The single element was nearly 3 meters. You have to choose the material according to the usage, indoors or outdoors, and mechanical stability. Using a VNA, we can trim our antennas to a good SWR. Without such a device, we get a good performance if we stick to the results of the calculator. Ground plane antennas have an excellent far field behavior and are perfect for many applications. One last thing. In the intro, I showed you a J-pole antenna, which looks completely different. This one is for 868 MHz LoRa. This antenna is more complex to build and I would not try it without a VNA on hand. But it works and delivers a slightly different radiating pattern than the ground plane. Maybe even better suited for satellite reception. As always, you find all the relevant links in the description. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.